All right, gonna get going here today, and this is this is one of those exciting days for me because I get to teach you something that you have not seen before. It's pretty rare to get to Algebra 2 and find out that there's something that, hey, I haven't ever done this before in math. Um, because we cover a lot of topics for everything up through geometry. And so, like I said, this is, this is exciting because you, you get to see something brand new and, and I get to be the first one to teach it to you. But before we start talking about four eight complex numbers today, I want to remind you that registration for next year's classes, it starts today. And um, if you are getting a solid A, a solid A minus, you're doing all of your homework, you're not having to take retakes, you should be signing up for pre-calculus for next year. If, um, I know some of you are going to be saying, I, okay, this met my requirements for math, I'm not going to take math next year, and that, that's right. If you pass both semesters of Algebra 2 and you have enough credits, that could be it. But if you are going to go to college, but you're not necessarily getting an A or an A minus in here, then you should go to college algebra. So we, we have two classes after this that are both college and the school's classes, college algebra and then pre-calculus. Um, but pre-calculus, it's a really tough course. So you have to have amazing Algebra two skills in order to make it in pre-calculus. So once again, if you're getting an A, A minus, solid, doing all your homework, then pre-calculus is the class for you. Anybody else that, that wants to continue on because they're thinking of going to a, a four-year college, um, you have to have four years of math to do that. So then you'd probably want to take college algebra next year and again if you pass both semesters of algebra 2 you have technically math, met your math credits so yeah you might not take math next year but that's everything you needed to know for math registration and if you have a specific situation um, something really unique to you you're going into a certain field and uh, you need a little bit more definition about what it is you should be taking for math, feel free to email me and we can email back and forth and, and figure out what you should register for. So today, complex numbers. When you came to class today, you knew the real numbers. It turns out that's only a portion of all the numbers that we have out there. The real numbers are a subset of what's called the complex numbers. And that's what we're going to learn about today. So we are going to identify complex numbers. We're not going to worry about the graphing piece because we're not doing any imaginary graphing in here. And then we're going to perform operations with complex numbers. We will learn about them, learn how to add, subtract, and multiply them today. And then tomorrow we'll focus on dividing and finding those complex number solutions for quadratic equations. So we're going to start with stuff we already know. Here's a for instance. We know the square root of 16. Somebody unmute and tell me what the square root of 16 is. Four. Yes. Square root of 12. Well. We know that it has to be simplified because we start running through the perfect squares that could go into it. Nine won't go into it, but four will. And then we remember, oh yeah, if it's on my little bookmark of perfect squares, I should simplify it. So this is going to be two square roots of three. Square root of 75, same thing. It's not a perfect square. It's not on our list. But we realize, wait a minute, 25 goes into that three times. And 25 is on my perfect square bookmark. So that's going to be 5 square roots of 3. Now, we get to this problem. The square root of negative 49. And we can't figure it out. We try to punch it in the calculator, and the calculator says, error, not a real number. But we have to be able to do it. I don't know. 
know if you know this, but there are some mathematicians out there that have worked, there's, there's one specifically really famous guy that worked on one math problem for three years. Now, if after he'd been working on that problem for a year, he got to something like this and said, well, I give up, we would have lost out on a ton of mathematics. So what happens is you get to a point where you need a placeholder. You need to have something just to take its place in the hopes that later on you'll come back into the real number system. You don't give up because I, I don't know if I've told you this before. We have two rules in math. The first rule is you never give up and the second is there's no crying in math. So you keep moving forward and you figure out what you can do. So here's what we do with the square root of 49. We realize the issue, of, or I should say the square root of negative 49. We realize the issue, the problem, is the negative. So we factor it out. And we say, OK, I've got the square root of negative 1 thing. I'll have to figure that out. But I know this is 7. And then we use a placeholder. The square root of negative 1 is called i. And that's a little cursive i. And that is the imaginary number. Now, it would look really weird if we wrote it as i7. We don't do that. We know that. We put the coefficient in the front. So we would write that as 7i. So the first big concept we have to get through today is this. The square root of negative 1 is a little cursive I. And it just stands for imaginary. Now, this person that's been working on these math problems for years knows that they used I for negative 1. And like I said, they're hopeful that as they continue doing more math, something will happen to this so that they get back in the real number system. And it doesn't take too long to figure out that if we have i squared, which would be the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, that would give us the square root of negative 1 squared. And square root and squaring are inverses of each other. So they would drop out, and we'd be back in the real number system again. So we'd get a negative 1. Now, those are the two things that are huge for us. We need to know the square root of negative 1 is i. And we have to know that i squared gets you back to negative 1. As you go on to further math, you start looking at situations like, well, how about i cubed then? Well, I already know what i squared is. It's negative 1. So I just need to multiply that by i, which is the square root of negative 1. So that's going to give me negative i. And then for i to the fourth, I could take i to the third, and I could multiply that by another i. And that would give me negative i squared. But wait a second. i squared is negative 1. So this is really the negative of negative 1, which is 1. And we could continue on that way. But we're going to see that raising this to powers, what really matters is if we raise it to an even power, we can get back into the real number system. So that's what the mathematicians that are working on the really long math problems are hoping for, is that at some point, they'll have to raise that i to an even power, and they'll be right back in the real number system. Because real numbers are things we can graph and see and actually do math with. So imaginary number, square root of negative 1. That's the most basic one. But really, it's going to be any number with i in it. So those are going to be our imaginaries. Anything that has the square root of something negative. Complex numbers. Remember I said, we know the real number system. Today we're opening up a whole new group, and those are called the complex numbers. Those are going to look like this. 
this is a complex number in standard form, A plus BI. So there's going to be numbers in there for A and B. So it might say something like 3 plus 2I. But what's really important about this is that we have the real number part in the front, and then we have the imaginary part in the back. And notice how that I is all the way in the back there. So a real part and an imaginary part gives you a complex number. Now, the next piece down here, we actually won't use this until tomorrow. And this is a complex conjugate. So what is a complex conjugate and how do we use it? Well, if we have a plus bi, and this is in our denominator of a fraction, we have to get rid of it because this is a square root right here. And you can't have square roots in the denominator. So it's complex conjugate will be a minus bi. Now, if you remember, I talked to you about conjugates before. And that always produces that sum and difference pattern. And we're going to use this for dividing complex numbers. But that's not our objective today. That's our objective, one of our objectives for tomorrow. So dividing complex numbers will definitely hit that harder tomorrow. All right. First things first. We have to be able to write our negative square roots as imaginary numbers. And then we'll figure out what to do with them after that. But the big step is, how do you write these things? So this says simplify each number using the imaginary number i. And as soon as I see a negative, I should be thinking, OK, I'm going to need the square root of negative 1. But then I have to think 18. I'd still have 18 left. Um, let's see, biggest perfect square that'll go into 18? 9 goes in twice. So if we multiplied all of this back together, we would still get the square root of negative 18 because these are all square roots and we could just multiply them back together. But now in simplified form, this is i, the square root of 9 is 3, and then we have the square root of 2. So we can write this as 3i square roots of 2, but if it says write your answers in standard form, that means the I has to go in the back. And the reason that we tell you to write it like this instead is because we're really worried that somebody's going to accidentally put that I underneath the square root symbol. We got rid of the square, symbol, square root symbol by making it I. So if you're careful, you can write it this way. Don't let your square root get away from you and, and become way too long. But most of the answers that you'll see for these are, are going to be in this form, 3i square roots of 2. All right, b, square root of negative 1, square root of 25 happens to be a perfect square. Well, I know the square root of negative 1, it's i. And I know the square root of 25, it's 5. But we certainly wouldn't write it i5. We'd write it as 5 i and put the i in the back. Next one up, square root of negative 12. Right away, I see the negative. I know I'm going to need the square root of negative 1, which is i. Well, 12, we have a perfect square that will go into that. 4, 3 times. So again, if we multiplied all these together, we would get negative 12. Well, this is i. This is 2, and that's the square root of 3. So this is really awkward in the front. We wouldn't leave that. 2i square roots of 3. Or like I said, if you are very careful with your square roots, you could write it as 2 square roots of 3i. Just don't let that square root symbol get away from you. D. Absolutely need the square root of negative 1. But then I look at the other one. That's going to be the square root of 7. The only perfect square that's smaller than 7 that we could try to divide it by would be 4. And that doesn't go in evenly. Turns out we can't simplify the square root of 7. 
but we simplified the square root of negative 1. So again, you'll probably find it in the book as i square roots of 7, but if you're careful, square root of 7, i is in what's called standard form. All right. Down here, it says, explain why the square root of negative 64 is not equal to negative square root of 64. Well, this one has the negative inside the radical. So this would be i times 8, which is 8i. Not this one. The negative is outside the radical. So it'll be negative 8. So explain why they're not equal. The negative is underneath the radical. So the negative is in the radical for the first example. That's what makes them so different. It's OK to have a negative outside the radical. But if you put it inside the radical, now you're looking at imaginary numbers. And that is a huge difference. One is imaginary, and one is not. One is real. So this says, what do we get when we combine a real number with an imaginary number? That's a complex number. So this is the one that I showed you on the first page where we talked about how you've got this real part and this imaginary part. And that's a plus bi. And this is called a complex number. in standard form. So having that i all the way in the back is what makes it in standard form. And most of the time, that's how we want our answers. We want our answers written in standard form. But like I said, there's, there's always a risk when you're teaching people about imaginary numbers the first time out that somebody's going to do something like this. And that's wrong because the i can't be underneath that radical symbol. So a lot of books will just write the answers like this instead, just to make sure that everybody can see, hey, this is the right answer as we go through it. So complex numbers, imaginary is a huge piece for us today. And now what we have to do is we have to add and subtract these. So I think, well, how am I supposed to know how to do that? Well, to work with imaginary numbers, you treat i just like it were an x or a y or another variable, unless you have the chance to square it. Because if you have the chance to square it, then you need to say, oh, good, that's a negative 1. No more imaginaries. So I look at these two and I see this is a complex number in standard form and this is a complex number in standard form and they just want me to add them. Well, normally, I would just add like terms. Good, because that's what you need to do, add like terms. So it's really 4 minus 3i plus a minus would be minus 4 plus 3i. And you just put 4 and negative 4 together and get 0 and negative 3i plus 3i together. And you also get 0. So those two add to 0. Now, when do you have to be careful? Right here with b. Because this is not addition. This is subtraction. And remember, whenever there's a negative in front of parentheses, we have to distribute it as if it were a negative 1. So this will be 5 minus 3i plus 2, because negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. And then negative 1 times positive 4i would be minus 4i. Then we can combine like terms. 5 plus 2 is 7. Negative 3i minus 4i is minus 7i. And that gives us a complex number in standard form when we're done. So now, 
this is the got it. So that was our, our first chunk of learning towards getting our objectives met for today. And that's adding and subtracting with imaginary numbers. So remember subtraction, you have to be a little bit more careful. I'm going to go ahead and put you in breakout groups. And then I want you to unmute so you can talk about these. And then we'll come back together and I will ask some people what they had. Please make sure you're brave and talk to each other as you're working through these. Please make sure that you're brave and you unmute and talk to each other. I, maybe you already did and you said, let's just do these and then check back in when we have them all done. But make sure you talk to each other so you're feeling confident about your answers. Excellent. We've got somebody unmuted in here. This is the first group where people have been talking to each other. Keep doing it. Work with each other. Okay, so... Oh, too quiet. Make sure that you're unmuting. I don't know, maybe you already did and you decided you'll do them first and then check in with each other, but make sure you're checking in with each other at some point so you can feel like, hey, I've got these right answers and I'm confident about this. Make sure you unmute and talk to each other. Maybe you already did. Maybe you said, let's oh, run through yeah, it. Yeah, Ashley's mic is a little is fuzzy. When oh, no. Ashley, do you have your, your phone by your computer? Because sometimes that gives feedback. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> so do the best you can, okay? Just checking in. Are you guys done with these? Maya and yeah, Matt and Nabea? I think we're done, yeah. You're done? Okay.
All right, I have you all back now. Can somebody tell me? Oh. Thank you. It's only done that one other time when I've done the breakout sessions. Weird. All righty. I'd like somebody to unmute and tell us what they had for an answer for A up there, please. Yeah, 4 minus i. So with this one, because it's addition, you can drop the parentheses. The parentheses are just to show you that it's a complex number. So adding a negative is subtraction. And then combine your like terms. B had subtraction. So somebody please unmute and tell me what you had for B. You have to distribute the negative like it were a negative 1. Usually if somebody's going to make a mistake, it's back here. Negative 1 times negative 2i is plus 2i. And then again, you combine your like terms. The two real numbers go with each other and the two imaginaries go with each other. Alrighty, somebody please unmute and give me their answer to C. It is 12i. So we had our real number parts cancel out on this one because we have to distribute the negative 1. So 8 plus 6i minus 8 plus 6i. The 8 and the minus 8 cancel out. 12i it is. So that's kind of interesting because we had things that had real number and imaginary parts to start off with. But in the end, we get a pure imaginary number. How about D? Somebody unmute, please, and tell us the answer to D. 18i. Good. In stereo, I heard 18i. So this one was addition, which means we can just drop the parentheses. They were just to show us that this is going to be two complex numbers that we're adding. And then negative 3 plus 3 gives you 0, 9i plus 9i gives you 18i. So that's not so bad. And that's addition and subtraction of complex numbers. That's a big chunk of our objective for today. So now we know about them. We know the square root of negative 1 is i. And we know that i squared is negative 1. Now those are the things that have to kind of stay in the back of our minds whenever we're working with complex numbers. Because when we start multiplying some of these, we are going to start to see i squared pop up. What is each product? i times i. That's i squared. Now, if I don't recognize that as negative 1, I'm going to get that wrong because I'm supposed to know, hey, the square root of negative 1 equals i, and if I have i squared, I get to go back in the real number system because that's going to be a negative 1. And there it is. Now I look at B and I think, OK, when we were adding and subtracting before, I was just supposed to treat i like it was any other variable. You are when you work with it. The only difference is if you see an i squared, you better change that to a negative 1. So if this were just an x in here, I'd just distribute. Well, that's exactly what we do. This will be negative 15i plus 6i squared. But ding, 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 the little bell in your head goes off because you're like, wait a second, I can't leave i squared. That's negative 1. So now I know 6 times negative 1, that's actually going to be minus 6. And I want it in standard form. So I'm going to put that in the front because it's real part followed by imaginary part. I look at C and I think, hmm, well, if they were x's, I would do FOIL on this because it's a binomial times a binomial. 
Well, then that's what you do. First times first, outside times outside, inside times inside, last times last. Now, two things should pop up at you here. The first is, oh, I can put those two middle ones together. The second is, I squared is negative 1. So that's actually going to make this plus 6. So now I can put the two real numbers together. Negative 4 plus 6 is 2 minus 11i. And now I have it all simplified. So these are the biggies. If you still have your note packet, every time we flip the page on this, write those down on those little, I always have those horizontal lines down the side. Square root of negative 1 is i. I squared is negative 1. And before long, it's, it's just going to come to you. You'll, you'll know it immediately. So now, we have some got it's down here. I'm not going to put you in the breakout rooms, but I want you to give this one a try. We'll give you a little time, and then um, I'll call on somebody to help us out and tell us what they had. Anybody feel confident enough to unmute and tell us what they have? It certainly is. Good job. 7 times 3 is 21i squared. And then again, that little ding, ding, ding in your head, that is 21 times negative 1, which is negative 21. So good job. Go ahead. And work through B. Remember, it's a binomial times a binomial. So we're going to do FOIL on that. I'll give you a little bit longer to work through it. Anybody have it done and uh, want to share with us? Perfect. Yep. First times first is 8. Outside times outside is plus 10i. Inside times inside is minus 12i. Last times last is minus 15i squared. Ding, ding, ding. The bell goes off. And we say, well, that's a negative 1, so that's really going to be 8 plus 15, which is 23, and then 10i minus 12i, that's minus 2i, and we have it. Now, this next one is special. Go ahead and try that one. Can somebody please unmute and tell us what the answer to this one is? Is it 41? It is 41. That's exactly what it is. And you feel like you did something wrong because the imaginary stuff disappeared. It's supposed to because this is the complex conjugate. And remember, that is a sum and difference pattern. One's a plus and one's a minus. And that means no middle terms. So the i's are going to drop out. First times first is 16. Outside times outside is plus 20i. 
Inside times inside is minus 20i. Last times last is minus 25i squared. The bell goes off. Ding, ding, ding. This is negative 1. So I'm really going to have negative 25 times negative 1, which is positive 25, plus 16, which is 41. And then those two middle terms drop right out. So it's just 41. Now this is huge for the next part of our objective, which is tomorrow, where we take a peek and say, oh, what about dividing? We're going to have to use the complex conjugates. So the first term is the same, the last term is the same, but the sign in between them changes, so they become that sum and difference pattern. Because here's what happened that's really cool. This was a complex number times a complex number, but when we multiplied them together, we were back in the real numbers. We got a real answer. And that's what we have to make sure happens when we're doing division because we can't have imaginaries, which are the square root of negative 1, in our denominator. So because this is brand new, if anybody wants to see one more of anything, please unmute and let me know. Do you want to do another simplifying with negative under the radical? Do you want to do some more adding, subtraction, or multiplying? You're all feeling confident? All right. Then some practice would be good. And there it is. Oh, it's probably in the glare. There we go. For eight, day one, page 253, 8 through 12, 18 to 26, and 48 to 54, the evens. When you get to your homework paper, after you've got this assignment written down, the first thing you should write down is square root of negative 1 equals 1 equals i, and i squared equals negative 1. Now, I know there was somebody that came in late. We talked about registration early in the class. If you're getting an A or an A minus and you have all your homework in all the time and you're really solid with your skills, then you should sign up for pre-calculus next year. If you realize whatever field you're going into, it does not require math. Yes, you, if you pass both semesters of Algebra 2, you have met your math requirements. You would not have to take math next year. But if you're hoping to go to college, colleges now require, at least four-year colleges, require four years of math at the high school level. So the other class that's available for students that have passed Algebra 2 but maybe have not done super well is college algebra. So A, A minus, all homework is always turned in. You should be signing up for pre-calculus. And everybody else, if you want a math class for next year, that'll be college algebra. That's it for today. As always, you're welcome to stay and uh, work on the assignment. Ask questions about anything. Or you can sign off and go to work and then um, come back anytime before the Google Meet will be over, which will be at 1045. Bye, Ms. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Thank you.